I've often been asked what advice I would give to every new Stack Graphics user when they first started to use the program. I think the first thing I would tell them is learn to use the right mouse button. In Stack Graphics, the right mouse button always brings up a pop-up menu with options that are useful for whatever you happen to be doing. Much of the power of Stack Graphics is on that right mouse button, and you really need to get used to pressing it. For example, if I'm in the data book and I press the right mouse button, I'll see a pop-up menu with options such as copy, copy transposed, insert, delete, sort the file, split the file, combine the columns, print, print preview, all those types of options that are really helpful. Or if I'm in a regression procedure, standard statistical analysis procedure, looking at a graph perhaps, and I press the right mouse button, I'll see paint options, analysis options, graphics options, reset, scaling, print, print preview, save graph. Again, lots and lots of useful options. Pressing that right mouse button has to become routine. A second related tip is to check pane options. Now, whenever you create a table or a graph in Stack Graphics, it gets placed in a pane of a splitter window. Those panes have options, and you need to press that right mouse button and check out pane options whenever you're looking at any table or graph. For example, I'm currently looking at a graph that was created in the simple regression procedure. It has on it the line of best fit, confidence intervals, prediction intervals, and so forth. Now, if I press the right mouse button, the first option on the pop-up menu is pane options. Now, pane options lets me do various things. If I have fit the model by more than one method, I can show both methods or perhaps just the least squares fit. I can show prediction limits and or confidence limits or perhaps just prediction limits. I can set the confidence level to 95% or I can change it to some other level that I'm more interested in. As far as the types of limits are concerned, I could do two-sided intervals. Well, that was the default, but sometimes I might like to see just a lower bound. So you need to set the options and press OK so that you can get different types of effects. The third tip is that every column has a specific type. Some columns are numeric, some are character, some are dates, some are times, some are formulas, and so forth. If a statistical procedure expects numeric data, it's going to give, give you an error message if you give it a column that's typed as character. Now, how does data get typed as character when perhaps it looks like it's numeric? Well, sometimes if you've read data from Excel, Excel may have typed a column as char character or text because maybe it had both strings and numbers in it. And perhaps when it got read into stack graphics, it got set as a character column. Here, for example, is a column, small column of data, which somehow has come across with both text and numbers. If you try to do an average or standard deviation of that column, you're going to get an error message because it's not really a numeric column. Now, you can tell that by double-clicking on the header of the column, which will bring up the Modify Column dialog box. And you can see here that the type of that column is character. Well, if all you want is the numeric values, you can switch the type to numeric and press OK. That will wipe out any non-numeric data, and now you could compute a mean and a standard deviation. The last tip I'd give a new user is to be sure to read the PDF documentation. We've created over 3,000 pages of documentation for Stack Graphics and all of its statistical procedures. 
If you go to the Help menu, you'll see underneath the Help menu a selection labeled Procedure Documentation. This gives you access to over 150 PDF documents that describe every one of the statistical procedures in Stat Graphics. What these documents have is a full description and worked example of that procedure. So for example, in simple regression, it will start with a data set involving X and Y and take you step by step through the analysis. It will explain every table, every graph, every option on every dialog box. At the same time, it will show you the formulas that are being calculated. So if you need to verify by hand for validation purposes, perhaps, what Stack Graphics is doing, you can do it. We've worked long and hard on this documentation, and I really hope you'll read it.